Bob Best use of that was very interesting and beneficial, and I'm sure we can all relate as children and parents, hopefully. Next up, we have our first feature. Before we move on, I would like to remind those who just arrived that we have a sign-up sheet for stand-up, uh, or open mic, I'm sorry, if you would like to sign up your name. Please do, the sheet is on the table. Next up, we have our first featured visual artist, Iman Hijazi. Iman will present to us her collection by the name Manifesting the Unseen. Iman is a Muslim American born in Los Angeles, California. She moved to Dearborn, Michigan in 1999, where she was introduced to the Arab American community that spanned decades before her arrival. Her passion for drawing began from a young age. Since then, she has been on a journey to become a fine artist. She holds a degree in graphic design. However, that would not satisfy her ambitions. She studies extensively with her mentors and teachers in order to polish and expand her artistic skills. At first, Iman heavily invested herself in Western art with little curiosity about Islamic art. Soon enough, she was introduced to the vastness of Islamic art, which opened her heart to its various aspects and in the process discovered her Islamic identity within it. Iman has been practicing the art of Islamic geometry for nearly five years and will now present to us the depth and beauty of Islamic art. Please help me welcome Iman Hajazi. self-spoken so my voice is typically not loud. Um, thank you Nada for that very warm introduction. Um, like every artist, uh, we're not very good public speakers but I'm going to try my best. This is why we're artists actually. We uh, express ourselves in the visual sense rather than uh, speaking. Um, I would like to uh, begin um, in, the, in the Almighty Creator, the Benefits of the Merciful. Um, I'm going to split this talk into two parts. Uh, one part is going to be, the first part is going to be about my journey as an artist, and the second part is going to be about the art that's uh, being displayed, that has been created by me. Um, first and foremost, I did not grow up in a uh, typical Arab household. I grew up with a father who uh, had a very great intellect. Um, he grew up in West Africa, and uh, his father had great big dreams of him becoming a doctor, uh, a dentist actually. Um, but as a young age, um, he used to love to draw. He uh, had this ambition of always drawing and whatnot. And when he had come home one day to show his father, my grandfather, may uh, God rest his soul, um, or have mercy upon his soul. Um, so when my father had gone to his father, my grandfather, to show him his artwork, his father tore up his drawing, tell him, I have great big plans for you, I want you to become a doctor. What is this nonsense, this silliness? And so since then, uh, my father's artistic uh, abilities have always been hindered. They did not allow that uh, for, for that to happen with me. So ever since I was young, like many artists, I know some artists uh, come across their talent later in life, but with me it began very early on. And um, it started uh, ever since I could hold a pencil, as my father would tell me. And since then, he's kind of been the one that has uh, encouraged me uh, to constantly pursue this, no matter what, no matter what obstacles had come my way. Um, and so I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and I had moved to Michigan in the summer of 1999, uh, specifically Dearborn, you know, the hub of all of Arabs where they live. <laughs> And um, I kept making art, but I never had some form of formal training. It wasn't until I had gone to high school, actually. Fordson High School was the first time I ever received a formal training in art. And uh, like anybody who's self-taught, they, they go in and they think that, oh, I have it all down, I'm gonna impress my teacher. Well, guess what? My artistic abilities were at zero. <laughs> And so my, uh, the, my teachers at the time, who some of you may know, uh, Mr. Muhammad Bazi and uh, uh, Miss, Mrs. Uh, Leslie Curtis, they sort of paved the way for me. They showed me uh, how to 
hone my talent and hone my skill set and to become better. And I haven't reached the level yet. And I had gone to college and I had started at Henry Ford College and I had taken a few courses in art. And then again, I thought, you know, wow, I'm amazing. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I, it was constant that constant challenge of being in a new classroom, being introduced to a new professor, uh, enabled me to really humble myself and to constantly strive to always want to be better. Um, I had made the decision that after I learned what I thought I could learn about uh, fine arts and drawing, uh, so to speak, because that was my passion at the time, I thought, okay, my artistic endeavors have finished, but I would like to learn the history of art. So I, therefore, I went on and um, had gone to the University of Michigan Dearborn and had pursued study in art history. I quickly realized that art history wasn't something that was in my passion and um, the guest uh, professor at the time for our museum studies course, her name is Nancy Barr, she's actually head of photography department at the DIA, um, had looked at my journal one time and told me, why are you wasting your talent? Because I would had I had drawn in my journal at the time, and we were, we were to submit these journals to the professor, and she told me that, you're wasting your talent. You should pursue this even further. So I had gone back and had gotten my degree in graphic design because in today's world, you cannot make it, you cannot make a means with fine arts just in itself. Um, so then I went and I got my graphic design degree and still I had that itch to constantly wanted to, to draw and, and to paint and to really look at the vastness of what fine arts uh, could provide for me as an artist. Um, and all the while I had heavily invested myself in Western art. I constantly pushed away the fact that I don't need to learn Islamic art. You know, Islamic art, just because I'm a Muslim, I don't need to learn Islamic art. You know, it was something that I was so oblivious to and I was very ignorant of. And uh, I had come across this art era, this art movement called Art Nouveau. And um, it's an art era that originated in Paris, France. And the more I dug deeper into this art form, because I was so fascinated by it, it's known as the uh, La Belle Epoque in, in French. And it was just the most beautiful art you could ever see uh, with the likes of Alphonse Mucha, Hector Guimard, and it was not just an art that uh, specialized in, in painting, it, it specialized in architecture, in art, typography. It's actually known to be the mother of graphic design because it was then where type, typeface and typography had originated from. And um, so the more I dug deeper, I kept referring, because in, in Art Nouveau, it had organic shapes of floral motifs. And it kept saying that this was very reminiscent or this was highly influenced by Islamic illumination. And every single time I would look at an art era or at an art form, it kept going back to Islamic art. And I realized that, okay, so it seems like Islamic art, be it as it may be, that we may think that it's very limited, it actually provided such a vastness. And it was a culture that I felt like I needed to tap into. And so my endeavor in Islamic arts, specifically in Islamic geometry, began five years ago. I went on a whim, I did some research, I went on Amazon, <laughs> and I bought the first five books I could find about Islamic geometry. And um, I had opened up a world of amazing art and motifs that I could not even comprehend. I looked at the, the, the Islamic patterns and I didn't know such things ever existed because I thought in Dearborn we should learn about this stuff. You know, we are in an Arab American community with predominantly Muslim population, and why why doesn't anybody ever talk about this? And I realized that I'm beginning to tap into an Islamic identity that that wasn't there before, and it was in celebration of Islamic culture in itself. And I real and with the realization that Islam does indeed have a culture. Not only does it have a culture in art, but in architecture, in medicine, in science, and in mathematics, and astronomy and astrology. There's so much Islamic culture that has influenced the entire world, and yet we only pay attention to the facade of things. And so that little gate had opened up a window of richness that had enlivened my life, so to speak. And so 
the first time I had tried to at least attempt to draw, it was difficult. I didn't have the tools. Um, I have some uh, examples to show you. I didn't have a compass. You know, with things, I realized that there's so much beauty to it. And I just want to let you know that Islam comprises, Islamic art comprises of three elements. Calligraphy, which is the more popular known uh, Islamic art. Uh, Tadhib, which is Islamic illumination, which is uh, actually supplements calligraphy. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like the, the illumination of a Quran uh, a cover where you see the Quran with the calligraphy and then the floral motifs that surround it. That is the illumination of uh, the Islamic art. And then of course, geometry, which is uh, has only begun, uh, sorry, uh, where uh, it has only been researched in the past uh, five decades. It hasn't been really, really researched enough, and I think a lot more research is still being done on it. And it was actually uh, catapulted by an, Isla uh, by an Iraqi mathematician and architect. His name is Isam al Said, and he's the one that somewhat put Islamic geometry on the map. He studied it extensively and began writing books about it, and his book was published before uh, published after his passing. He had passed away in 1988. And so that made way for Western uh, scholars to uh, begin study Islamic geometry. And what we see here today, Islamic geometry is actually becoming highly popular. It's becoming highly popular in practice because unlike illumination and calligraphy, which both need to be taught by a scholar, Islamic geometry is an art form that can be self-taught. So I found myself very comfortable with the idea of pursuing Islamic geometry.